So we've mastered espressos. What's the guts with the milk? Getting the milk right is a really, really important part of any milky coffee beverage. So there are several things to consider here. One is that when you're texturing the milk, it's important to make sure you've got it nice and velvety because that will affect the appearance of your coffee. Next, you need to make sure that you've got the right temperature because the temperature of the milk will affect how the coffee feels as it flows over your mouth and goes from front to back. You don't want to burn your tongue, but likewise, you want to have a nice warm sensation as it touches your tongue and goes through to the throat. So the third thing to consider is making sure that we've got the right jug for the job. So we know that we've got several different kinds of milk. We've got blue milk, full cream, we've got trim milk, we've got soy milk. But irrespective, we need to make sure that we've got the right size. So if we're making a whole heap of coffees or two or three coffees, we need a big jug, one coffee, small jug, pretty straightforward, common sense, right? right? Let's look at the steam on. When we turn the steam on on, what it's basically doing is forcing steam evenly out of each of these spouts. Now this particular one has got three spouts at the end, three holes, some machines have got four. Irrespective, what we're trying to do is force the steam down the end of the wand and then into the milk to create aeration. Okay? Now there's one thing we need to consider here. Because it's steam, it's quite common for it to condense in the end of the steam wand. So it's important that before we steam any milk, that we flush that out. Now likewise, because it's being forced with pressure, it will also have an immediate suck back when you turn the steam wand off. So we need to purge before we steam the milk and after we steam the milk. So it's important that when we introduce the steam wand into the milk, that we've got the steam wand quite close to the edge of the jug. Okay, so it's going to push it around the edge of the jug and then down to the bottom and back up again. So same as a basin of water, if you try to spin that with your hand, you have to do it from the edge. You can't really do it from the middle. Same principle applies. Now the other thing that's really important here is to make sure that we've got the end of the steam wand just touching the surface of the milk. So if you have a look, it's just on the surface. So if I've got the steam wand too high, all it's going to do is blow steam onto the top of the milk. Not much use. If I've got it too low, there's going to be no air introduced to the milk whatsoever. Okay? And it will probably create a bit of a squealing sound, which is quite common. Let's have a go at making some milk for a flat white. What we're trying to achieve here is some nice, smooth, velvety milk, and then just a thin layer of foam on top. So you'll notice that when we're aerating the milk, we just aerate it for a couple of seconds before we go deep with the wand. Okay? Once you've foamed your milk, it's important to let it sit on the bench for just a couple of seconds. This helps it to set. The next important thing, before you start pouring the milk, you need to remember that what's happened is the milk is separated. You've now got liquid at the bottom, you've got air at the top. So what we need to do is fold or surf the milk. This is done either on the bench or in the air, whichever is more comfortable. What we're trying to do is swirl the milk around. We want to fold the bubbles and the milk back into to each other. You'll see at the moment that it's, not, it's a matte sort of a colour, it doesn't have much gloss. What we're trying to do is get it nice and glossy or chrome-like. As you can see now, it's developing a nice sheen to it. Now we're ready to pour. And now some latte milk. So again, what we're trying to achieve is some nice smooth velvety milk, but we want a moderate amount of froth on top. So to achieve that, for aeration, we need to go to the point where we're just hitting lukewarm and then we put the wand deep. Now let's make some cappuccino milk. So what we're trying to achieve here is nice, high density, creamy milk. And the way we do that is to froth the milk to the point where it's just feeling lukewarm on our hand, just a little bit more. And then we go deep, creating a nice, 
thick head of foam on top to use for the cappuccino. For hot chocolate milk, you need to make the same sort of milk as you did for the latte. So you're looking for a nice velvety milk with just a moderate amount of froth. So same principle, you need to make sure that you aerate the milk so it's just before lukewarm, and then you go deep with the wand. A common mistake when people are learning how to froth milk is that they put the wand too deep inside the milk. Now the problem here, as you'll notice, is as I'm spinning the milk, I'm not getting any aeration in there whatsoever. So we're never going to get to the point where we've got any foam whatsoever. Another common problem that people make when they're learning to froth the milk is that they over aerate the milk. So what happens is you're punching big bubbles into the milk, but it never gets to the point where it's actually going round and round and making it thinner because they've left it too late to plunge the end of the wand deep into the milk. Another common problem with people learning how to froth milk is that they don't get the whirlpool going properly. And that's usually caused because they've got the steam wand too close to the centre of the milk, as you'll see here. So what's happening is, the milk is rolling over the top of itself, but it's not rolling in a whirlpool. So you end up with a big entrapment of big bubbles sitting on the surface of the milk. That's going to be hopeless, because they're never going to get in a whirlpool and spin around and thin out. You might find when you're learning to froth your milk that you'll get the occasional bubble that will rise to the surface. And that might be a little bit annoying, but you can, if you want, give the jug a couple of bangs. Like all the elements of making coffee, foaming your milk takes practice. Practice, practice, practice. But as a beginner, you're gonna use a lot of milk as you practice to foam. So, instead of using milk, what we can do is use the same volume of water and add just a couple of little drops of detergent. You'll be surprised, water and detergent will actually act very similarly to milk. There's nothing worse than getting a cold coffee. How do I tell if my milk's hot enough? Uh, there's also nothing worse than a hot coffee too. Too oh. hot, right? Okay, there's a pretty basic method we use here. What we need to do for a start is use the base of our palm as opposed to the fingertips because everyone's got different levels of sensitivity in their fingertips. Generally speaking, we've all got a pretty le similar level of sensitivity in the base of our palm. Okay, so we put that base of our palm to the base of the jug when we're frothing the milk. Now when it gets to the point as you touch and release, touch and release, touch and release, the idea of that, in touching and releasing, is that you won't desensitize the base of your hand. 
Okay? Once I've finished steaming my milk, I want to be able to put my palm of my hand to the bottom of the jug and hold it there for the count of one, two, and then release because it gets a little bit warm for me to hold my palm there. And that's pretty basic and it seems pretty simplistic, right? But it works. You'll notice that if I put a temperature probe in here, just to show you what I'm talking about, you'll see that it rises up between 65 and 70 degrees. That's the area that we want it, spot on. Hey Amy, I heard making coffee was like making a chocolate cake. Oh yeah, that's some sort of analogy, is it? Yeah, what do you think about that? Yeah, I guess, it's, yeah, I guess it makes sense. You've got a whole lot of different ingredients or components, I guess, that go into a cake. And I guess it's the same when you're making coffee. You've got all sorts of different ingredients and so forth that go into making coffee and all sorts of variables that are involved in it as well. So I guess if you're making a, a cake and you've got all the ingredients just right and then you come to bake the cake, you've got to make sure that you're baking the cake for the right amount of time. Same with an espresso. If you're making an espresso, you've got to make sure that you're extracting the espresso for the right amount of time. If you don't bake a cake for long enough, you get all these funny sort of undercooked sort of baking soda-y funny sort of flavours that will come into it. If you overcook it, you'll get those burnt sort of flavours. And I guess it's kind of the same when you're making a coffee.
So I mean, tell me how important it is to have good technique when you're pouring your milk. Well, there's a couple of things to remember. One, it's good to make sure that you're holding the jug in the right position as far as how high or how close to the surface of the coffee. When you're pouring and you hold the jug high, you won't get much foam coming over the edge of the spout. When you're down low to the coffee, you'll see that the foam starts coming out the edge of the jug. So what that is is like a paintbrush. So you can start using that to paint your picture or to create your pattern on the top of the coffee. Go slowly, start at the back of the cup, work your way back, slowly, slowly, with the tip nice and close to the coffee surface. Well, there's a couple of things to remember. One, it's good to make sure that you're holding the jug in the right position as far as how high or how close to the surface of the coffee. When you're pouring and you hold the jug high, you won't get much foam coming over the edge of the spout. When you're down low to the coffee, you'll see that the foam starts coming out the edge of the jug. So what that is is like a paintbrush. So you can start using that to paint your picture or to create your pattern on the top of the coffee. Go slowly, start at the back of the cup, work your way back, slowly, slowly, with the tip nice and close to the coffee surface. So Eamon, every cafe is different. Is there a natural flow to the setup? Yep, there's a lot to consider here, but there's some basic principles you want to follow. On your bench, you're going to have obviously your coffee machine, and your grinder, you're going to have your tamper and your tamp mat, and you're going to have your sauces and your milk jugs and so on and so forth. At this end, which is generally going to be the end where you receive your orders, is your start point. So call that the beginning. At the beginning, you're going to have your grinder. Close by, you want to have your dump bin, okay? On your dump bin, you want to make sure you've got a tea towel so you can wipe out the porta filter every time you dose your coffee. Obviously, the other thing you need quite close to your grinder is your tamper and your tamp mat. <clears throat> close by to that, you want to have a brush as well so you can brush away the extra grind and dispense of them as you need. As we move along, we come down here to the area where we're going to put our cloths. Okay, so you have two cloths, generally speaking, when you're making coffee. One will be for the bench. Okay. The other one here is only and only for the steam wand, all right? That's all about safety and hygiene. Manky want, milk. Yeah, manky milk. You don't want to be contaminating your, your bench grime and so forth with the end of your steam wand because the end of your steam wand is going to go into every single milky coffee, okay? Important to remember. Now coming down to this end of the bench, you want to make sure you've got your sauces, your teaspoons, your chocolate, your cinnamon, your syrups, all that sort of thing, all collectively together so it's nice and easy to access once you've got your espresso, you've got your milk, and you're ready to go. Okay, Amy, I've got us in a situation here where we're going to pretend we've got a few orders up, right? They're a busy cafe situation. So there's two of us on the machine at the moment because we're quite busy, right? So let's assume I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing the milk. Yep. So I'm going to get you to do the shots. Okay. Feel all right about that? Yep. Cool. Okay, so generally speaking, what will happen, orders will come on your side. So I'll have, like, if we're in a cafe, maybe a cash register yeah, as well? Yeah, or you'd have a printer. Yep. Right, you'd have a printer, you'd take the docket, Put it on the left hand side here and you put them up chronologically so going like that and obviously first in first out sweet pretty straightforward okay so we've got a bunch of orders here what will happen is you'll make the shots pass the shot to me i'll pour the milk put it on the saucer and it will be dispensed with the docket to the table right okay yep now there's a few areas here where people seem to do a little bit of a hiccup the type of coffee when it comes in is really important so, long black, cappuccino, flat white. Which shot are you going to make first? The cappuccino and the flat white. Why is that? Because they've got milk in them. So why is that important? Because you'll steam the milk and then I can pour the long black. That's it. So you've got a big window there where I'm doing the whole milky thing and I'm doing my fluffing around and I'm putting my chocolate on the cappuccino, getting them ready. Meantime, you're getting the long black ready. It's really important that we do the long black last. So when we send the coffees out, we're making sure that the long black crema, that is the crema on top of the coffee, doesn't dissipate. So when it arrives to the table, it looks nice and tastes nice. Okay? Yep. Cool. Now, there's a couple of other things to remember here. We've got long blacks, cappuccinos, teas, and so forth. Tea, right in the middle of all that. There's a short black and an English breakfast tea. What are you going to make first there? Definitely the tea. And if it was a cappuccino and a tea? Still the tea. Still the tea. Why is that? Because good tea takes three. Right on. Okay, now let's say we've got a few orders here. Now someone's coming, they're in a bit of a rush, they've ordered the takeaway flat white. When are we going to do that? In its turn. Why? Because it's their turn. Yeah, true. People in the cafe, 
will know when they ordered and they'll know when the person coming and ordering the takeaway coffee ordered as well. So they're going to want to make sure that they're getting their coffee in their turn. They don't want to be jumped and leapfrogged by the person who's coming in who's in a hurry. Because as far as we know, the people that are sitting down could be in a hurry as well. Okay? Now there's a couple of things to mention here. One, cleanliness. It's really important that you're keeping your station clean. I'm going to keep my station nice and clean, but it's up to you to make sure this area around here is nice and clean, your bench is kept nice and clean, and your grind area is kept nice and clean as well. It's paramount. Okay? Same goes for the floor, because it could be you're in a situation where you've got customers here who can see into your area. So good, clean workspace looks really, really smart. Okay? It looks professional. Same as the kitchen. If you look into a kitchen, you don't want to see food everywhere. You want to see it nice and neat and ordered. Cool? Cool. So those are the main things we need to remember when we're doing coffee and there's two of us. Now, if there was one of us, same, same, only different. <laughs> so I would be making coffee. I'd want to make my shots first yep. if I was by myself. And then I'd want to do my milk. Once I've done my milk, then I'd probably want to come back and do my long black. Okay? okay. Yep. Make sense? Yep. Cool. That's about it. So, Eamon, what happens if something happens to the coffee between us making it and it getting to the customer? Mm, yeah, that can be frustrating, especially when you're busy. But, you know, accidents do happen, and that's just one of the things we have to take on the chin. So just slot the same order back into your order of coffees and make it as soon as you're able to.